Sergeant America here once again late to the party getting closer every time though on these next couple books you hear people talk about independence and sometimes it's because it's uh, maybe not in your shop or because it's a little left field something that you're not usually into reading you may not get it until nearly it's halfway out or maybe you decide just to collect in trades like myself and uh, you know sometimes you just get something interesting and weird um, I think they talked about it in Wii 3 uh, I mentioned Red Rover Charlie Red Rover Charlie is about three dogs who are in the middle of some kind of weird near apocalyptic uh, world people are just dying left and right they're going crazy and the dogs are having to deal with them. You know, it shows a little bit of a, a nuclear explosion, but in the book they never explain uh, exactly what it is that starts to make the people go crazy or kills them off. Um, when I first saw the uh, issues of Red Rover Charlie on the shelf, I said I'm not going to pick it up. I'm not getting a, a series where you fall in love with a dog and the dog dies. Um, with We Three, I read it and I loved the story. I thought it was great. Made me go ahead and invest myself into Red Rover Charlie. And it, once again, it's the humanization of an animal, giving it every emotion, sense of intelligence. You know, that wonderful thing that Disney has done to make you care more about an animal than a person. Um, I read a whole bunch of The Walking Dead, the first omnibus, and I didn't care who stayed, who went, who died, who zombied. But with these three dogs, I cared more about don't let anything happen to them because I care and I'm invested into them. Uh, it was a wonderful story about, you know, what do dogs think about, what do they do. Um, it was lighthearted on some side, but then it did get very dark. Um, in a world where the people are going crazy, what do they do to dogs? Uh, in a world where there's no one to look after and protect these dogs, what happens to these dogs? It was very interesting to see the whole gambit, to see their interaction with each other, made their characterization very good. Each one was very flushed out and different from the other. Lots of other animals are introduced, and it was just nice to see some stories where, you know, it, it's not about the people, it's not about capes, it's not about superheroes, it's about interacting with the world, it's about interacting of a personal nature and it's about major overcoming of a situation so I have to say with Red Rover Charlie it was very interesting on that and I would definitely implore you guys both to read the book and to continue to check out indies um, independent books there's a story for everybody that whatever you're into besides the capes and, uh, and superheroes I mean they're out there so definitely, you know, even with Independence, there's um, Invincible and some of these other ones that, that make great superhero books also. But if you're into sci-fi, fantasy, animals, uh, noir novels, space cowboys, there's plenty out there. I would definitely say to check it out. Along that same note, um, I got into Rat Queens because I kept being told once again it's it, it's just wonderful. It's it's something that you had to get into because of other people's emotions and excitement over this book. I did. I grabbed a trade, and I love D and D. Uh, you know, when I was growing through high school and even afterwards, loved playing D and D with the buds. Uh, you know, getting together, playing those video games of Baldur's Gate and that. And this was a wonderful take, uh, you know, girl power, go girls. Uh, all the main characters, the Rat Queens, uh, are definitely unique, are flushed out. You could easily have put guys in this with their attitudes and their actions, but by making them all female, it gave it a whole new dynamic. It took me totally outside of the box of what I knew, 
and made it so much more exploratory and so much more fun to taste. And I definitely thought each one was, you know, wonderfully characterized. Um, the artist, uh, and I would have to check on that, I believe it's Upchurch. And uh, just to be sure, yeah, so Curtis J. Webb is doing stories. Rock Upchurch is doing art and the covers. And yes, the artwork that you see on the cover is the same artwork that's in the book. So it's definitely the kind of thing that, you know, I. it's so rare now. I mean, that you know, you get so many of these cover artists, so you can't judge a book by its cover. But this one you can. It's fun. It's lighthearted. It's silly. But, you know, it's got some touches of some seriousness in it, just enough to make you continue to care and care about the characters so that as things happen to them, as they develop, you know, you are bought in, that you want to know what's going on. Um, you know, there's a lot of other fantasy books out there. I just recently read uh, The Baldur's Gate, um, one with uh, Minsk and his little hamster boo uh, from the video game Baldur's Gate, and I didn't care for that one, but I did like this one. You know, I think Rat Queens has got a second trade out even now, so I'll be picking that up hopefully soon. And, you know, um, I, I'm not reading issue by issue, but I'm hearing from people what's kind of continuing to go on. And they're still as excited as they were from the first couple issues. You know, it's wonderful to hear that they, they, they haven't lost it. They don't feel that anything is old hat, that they're not falling into any old patterns, so... It definitely, when you hear people talk about their books, and you hear them talk passionately, that's what makes me want to get a book. So, um, these are wonderful books. I would recommend Red Rover Charlie, Rat Queens, in trade or in single issues, whatever you can get your hands on. So, I'm getting thirsty. I'm going to go grab a drink. Enjoy the rest of the party.